put a soil thermometer out here today just to see what our soil temperature was where we have plenty of ground cover and we're protecting and shading the soil. And as we pull back the sward from this, we see that our soil temperature is 70 degrees on a hot day in Missouri. So we're, we're pushing 90 degrees now and our soil air temperature and our soil temperature is just 70 degrees. So we've got plenty of shading and moisture here and that 70 degrees is an ideal temperature for microbial functioning and plant growth. So what we're looking at here, this was a single pass mowing uh, to so, sort of as a trial to see if, if this needed to be mowed, but Steve discovered that he has a lot of bird's nests in here on the ground and he decided to quit immediately. But I wanted to point out the difference in temperature here. So where we had the fresh growing forage versus the mown mulch, it's actually 20 degrees higher here. So it was 70 degrees over there where we put it into the, the fresh forage that, that had not been grazed yet. And here, what we're looking at is we're looking at 90 degrees soil temperature. We still have a covering to the soil from the mowing. So we have a mulch cover, but yet the mulch cover is nowhere near as good as those deeper living roots and transpiring plants that are living above the soil surface. So what we've done now is we've moved our soil thermometer over to an area where we have the water troughs and mineral feeder. And you can see that the cattle have congregated around here and sort of beat this area up a little bit. And so we've got some bare exposed soil here around the mineral feeder. Stuck our thermometer in and we're reading 104 degrees. So the ambient temperature today is 87 degrees right now. We were at where we had nice dense cover we were at 70 degrees soil temperature where we had the mown field and or that mown lane we were at 90 degrees soil temperature and now where we have exposed soil we're at 104 degrees that's a swing of 34 degrees and that that's a very significant swing in terms of its impact on a microbial population and plant regrowth activity Two weeks ago, just to give you an example of that, we were up in northern Alberta province, just an hour south of the Northwest Territories, wow. that far north in Canada. And we measured soil temperature. So we had, we were out on a ranch and we measured soil temperature where they had a nice dense sward of grass like this. Mm -hmm. It was 67 degrees. We went right over to where there was a really thin stand of grass. Mm -hmm. It was 125 degrees in northern Alberta. Yeah. So even that far north, you can heat the soil up that much. As we heat up the soil temperature, then we're damaging our plants. We're damaging, we actually, our, our soil level insects go away because they don't like hot soil. They're gonna find a place that's more conducive for them. And our earthworms, what do they do? They go deeper into the soil. So they quit working for us as well, breaking down all of this organic material or trample on the soil surface. So we lose all of that. The other thing is that as that soil temperature heats up, we start to lose our microbial population. Microbes, when soil temperature gets to 100 degrees, and it's very, very easy for that to happen on a summer day anywhere in North America if you've got exposed soil. And that doesn't mean that you have to have bare soil. It just simply means that you've grazed it down so tight that sunlight, there's no shading. There's no, not enough plant blade or leaf material left to shade the soil. So if sunlight can directly hit the soil, you're gonna heat that soil up significantly. So what happens here is that at 100 degrees soil temperature, our microbes start to break down. And once we reach 130, 140, we are literally killing a bunch of those soil microbes. And so we've lost a lot of that microbial population that is so desirable for water cycling, nutrient cycling, feeding the plants, and so forth. The other thing, again, is the evaporative loss. 
again, as soil temperature reaches 100 degrees, then we actually will have 85% of our soil moisture lost and only 15% still available for plant growth and regrowth. Now contrast that to a soil temperature of 75 degrees in a well-shaded soil, and we, have, we still have 100% of our soil moisture available for plant growth and regrowth and microbial support. So again, it's critically important, especially as we go deeper in the summer, to make sure that we do not graze our pastures too short, too tight. My recommendation and what we have found works best is particularly during those time periods, do not let your livestock graze your pastures under five to six inches, minimum height. If you maintain them at at least five to six inches, you're gonna have plenty of blade and leaf material to shade and protect your soil moisture, your soil temperature, and also you're leaving enough blade material of your plants to have your solar panels for photosynthetic activity to occur, and you'll get much more rapid regrowth. Now, what are we also trying to do in August and September? We're trying to grow stockpile to feed our cattle or, or our sheep, whatever our livestock are through the winter. And if we have plenty of solar panel left, we have a much easier time growing that stockpile and we can grow a very viable stockpile.